In this video, we will look at the math of how a naive base classifier works. So what have we been doing so far? We have training sets, say documents for example, and we extract features from that training set. For example, whether they contain the word greatest, whether they contain the word disappointing, whether they have an N with a curl on top, and we get a vector of features. Next to that vector of features, we have a label that comes in with the training data. This label tells you what the correct uh, label or classification should be. For example, if something has the word greatest and does not have the word disappointing, it is probably going to be a positive movie review. So having this, we need uh, an equation that can help us determine the probability that, that links these features to this label. So for example, if someone has the feature greatest and does not have the feature um, disappointing, what is the probability that it will be positive or negative? And then we will use this to classify new documents that come in without the label because the system has never seen them before. And the computer will uh, try to calculate the probability of them belonging to one category or the other. We'll use a technique called naive base classification. Why is it called naive? Because we will use a technique called bag of words that will ignore the order of the words. As we saw last week when we looked at n-grams, the ordering of words is very important. When you have uh, the word, um, we finish each other's, you have almost completely determined what could come next. Maybe it'll be sandwiches, maybe it'll be sentences. It'll practically never be chairs. So it will be naive to assume that the order of words is irrelevant, which is what this system does. It takes all of the words in your document, basically puts them in a bag, and then the only thing you know is whether the word is there or not, or maybe how many times you see each word in a bag. But you completely lose the connections that you have with the order of the words. We will assume that position does not matter. This is a very naive uh, supposition. We assume that, words, uh, that any word will have the same effect regardless of its position in document. For example, the word love matters the same if it's at the beginning, the middle, the end, followed by a certain word, followed by not a certain word, and so on. By the way, we can put bigrams and trigrams into the bag of words. It's not just single words, but we will lose the exact ordering, and most importantly, we will lose information about their position in the whole document. So we can have things like bigrams and trigrams in the bag of words. They're just going to be uh, disordered. In a more abstract way to look at this, the presence of one feature is unrelated to the presence of other features in this assumption. So um, again, we're going to presuppose that the existence of a certain bigram is independent from the existence of a certain other bigram in the bag of words, which is probably not a true assumption, but we will use it in this system. So that's why it's naive. Why do we call it Bayesian? Because we are going to count how many times we see each word or each feature, and then we're going to relate that to the probability that a word belongs to a certain category or to a different category. Let's look at a very simple example from our book. Uh, let's say we have a training set of movie reviews with just five reviews. Three of them are negative, just plain boring, entirely predictable and lacks energy. No surprises and very few laughs. So we have three negative documents and then we have two positive documents. Very powerful, the most fun film of the summer. We want the computer to calculate the probability of certain features being in negative documents and positive documents. And then we want to use those probabilities to guess whether any new things are gonna be positive or negative. 
For example, the new review, predictable with no fun. Is it positive or negative? Your human intuition is probably telling you that it's a negative review. Let's see what the math says. The first step is calculating the probability that a review is either positive or negative in our training set. For example, we have um, a total of five elements in the set and three of them are negative. So the probability that a review will be negative is three negatives out of five total documents in the set. On the other hand, the probability that a review is positive is two positive documents in the training set divided by five total documents in the training set. So 60% and 40% are the probabilities that a review is going to be negative or positive in the training set. The next thing we need to calculate is the probability that given that we know that a document is negative, we will see the word predictable. Also, given that we know that a certain document is positive, what is the probability of the word predictable? And so forth for these three features we will define. The presence or absence of predictable, the presence or absence of no, and the presence or absence of fun. Uh, more accurately, how many times we see predictable, no, and fun in our documents and in the training set. Let's look at each of the elements in this equation. The first one is the number of times that we see predictable in either the positive or negative reviews. So for example, in the positive reviews, very powerful, the most fun film of the summer, the word predictable does not appear. So it appears zero times in the positive reviews. On the other hand, the word predictable appears once in the negative reviews in entirely predictable and lacks energy. So we have a one there. So this is the number of times the, the feature or the word appears in each category of reviews. The next number is smoothing. We add a one so that we can account for words that do not appear in either the positive or the negative set. This is so that we have no probabilities that are equal to zero, and we've already seen that it, this would cause problems because it would make things multiply by zero, which would uh, make the system less able to predict uh, new things it sees. So we have the total uh, number of appearances of predictable in positive or negative, and then plus one for smoothing. In the denominator, we have two elements. First, we have the total number of words in the positive and in the negative examples. So as you can see, if we count the positive words, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine words. Um, nine words. If you count the words in the, in the negative examples, there are three, five, eight, 10, 12, 14 total words. The final element of this equation is the total number of distinct words in all of the training set. Um, I have the distinct words there to the right. There's 20 of them. So as you can see, plus 20. So th these equations are the probability that given that a document is negative or positive, we will see this feature predictable. Uh, Given that a document is positive, how often will we see the word predictable? 1 divided by 29. Given that a document is negative, how often will we see the word predictable? 2 divided by 34. So we have the probabilities for all uh, of the other features. So you can um, check them real quick. And then what do we do with this? We multiply them. The probability that a document will be negative, given the features that we see, has two components. It is equal to the probability that a document will be negative, just out of all of the documents, multiplied by the probability that it has those features, given that it is negative. Let's move one step forward in the equation. 
the probability that the document is negative is 3 divided by 5. And then we multiply uh, this by a chain of multiplications for all of our features. So the first feature that we extracted for the test element was predictable. Um, the probability that a document um, would be negative, given that it, have the word, it has the word predictable in the training, is 2 divided by 34. Multiplied by the probability uh, of that the, word, that the document is negative, given that we have the word no, which is 2 divided by 34 multiplied by the probability that the document is negative given that it has the word fun. It's 1 divided by 34. Likewise with the positive features. The probability that a document is positive given the features that we see is equal to the probability that it, any document is positive multiplied by the probability of the features given the positive training examples. The first element is two-fifths, and then the probability that something is positive given that we see, um, I'm sorry, the probability that predictable shows up given that it's a positive document, one divided by 29. The probability that a document is, um, sorry, the probability that we have the word no given that the document is positive, one divided by 29. The probability that we have the word fun given that the document is positive, 2 divided by 29. If you do these multiplications, you're going to see that the first one is 6.1 to 10 to the minus 5. The second one is 3.2 to 10 to the minus 5. The larger probability is the one for the negative ones. So what did we do? We took the sentence predictable with no fun. We extracted three features predictable, no, and fun. And then ask the system, what is the probability that a document is negative given that I see those three words? We did a chain of, cal of multiplications and the larger probability is the negative one. So the system is going to tell you, I think this document is a negative review, predictable with no fun. And this matches our intuition that this should be a negative review. Notice again that it did it based on the probabilities in the training set. For clarity, I put this here. The first element in the multiplication is the probability that a document is positive or negative, or one category versus another. And the second element is the probability that we would see those features, or those words, given that a review is positive, in the training set. This is the math behind it. A naive base classifier calculates the probability of a label given the presence, absence, or count of features. And because we know those probabilities from the training set, we can use the probabilities to predict the label of a new document that we have not seen before. And in doing that, the system can see new examples and give them a classificatory label. It becomes a classifier. In the next video, we will look at how to evaluate the classifier and see if it's working or not.